Okay, I asked you all to, uh, to come uh, this evening, it's Friday evening, uh, because uh, we are getting ready to approach the weekend, and I have just gotten a number of calls and emails and uh, text messages from, from even friends saying, Mayor, uh, we're hearing that the city is going to be on lockdown and that the National Guard has already been dispatched to the city of Houston. And uh, I was listening to um, a recording, uh, an audio recording that's on, on uh, social media that's saying this person just came out of a conference uh, uh, conference with, with me, the mayor, and others, and in, where I indicated uh, that the city is going to be under a lockdown. The National Guard is coming, and that you need to go and stock up on food supplies and go to the bank and get your money. And the reality is, is that there are many people in our city that's believing these things. And then another uh, friend of mine just sent me uh, a text message. Uh, saying um, Homeland Security is preparing to mobilize the National Guard, preparing to dispatch them across the U.S. They are preparing to announce a nationwide two-week quarantine of all citizens, and on and on and on. And it's creating a great deal of en enhancing the anxiety level that already exists uh, during, this, during, this, during this moment of crisis. I've said before, number one, all of this is untrue. Uh, there has been no conference, no meeting, where we've discussed a lockdown and saying we're going to lock down the city this weekend or on Monday. All of that is untrue. So I've said it before. I said it earlier today. I think it's important for me to keep saying it. That's why I've asked people to come. Simply say that information is not true. Again, I'm going to ask people to get their information from credible sources. Social media can be good. But this time, social media is not good. And there are people who are intentionally, and let me underscore, intentionally putting out misinformation. I have talked with Chief Acevedo, HBD, and I've talked to Harris County District Attorney Kim Ong, and I've asked them both to investigate uh, this, this, mis this intentional misinformation. I do believe it is a crime and we should investigate it and find these, uh, these perpetrators, these actors, and prosecute them. Uh, because at, at this moment in time, this is the worst thing. And there are people who are intentionally putting out misinformation. So again, as we're about to approach this weekend, uh, when people's anxiety level is already very high, I simply want to take this moment to let people know uh, there's no lockdown, city is not shutting down. There are only three people in the state of Texas that can make that call. That's the mayor, the county judge, or the governor. And at this point in time, neither one of the three uh, have made this call. Neither one is saying shutting down. We are saying social distancing, washing your hands, using sanitizer. And so, again, let me say it again, and we'll say it as much as we need to, there is no reason to rush the grocery stores. There is no reason to go to the bank and take out a lot of your, take out your money, okay? Because bear in mind, there are some actors out here that are intentionally spreading disinformation and trying to um, scam people uh, at this moment, not only in our city, but across the country, and we want people to know that. So unless you know someone, unless you know these people on social media and, and the information is credible, do not, do not be listening and taking information from people that you do not know. The other thing I got a call for someone, there's a robocall that's going out saying the same thing. So someone or people are intentionally putting out misinformation and trying to create fear and pandemonium in the minds of a lot of people in our city. And I'm simply asking people, do not, do not get their information, get your information from social media. Chief Acevedo. No, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. In the direction of the mayor, we have uh, instituted a, or, or started an investigation into the uh, origins of these messages. But let me just be uh, real clear, uh, Mayor, uh, as we were discussing, the American people, the people of Houston and people of Texas need to understand that we absolutely know that we have hostile foreign governments that are utilizing social media, they've been utilizing it for a long time to, to spread misinformation. And I can assure you that what's going on in our country right now 
as it relates to the COVID-19 and this uh, public health uh, uh, challenge that we're facing as a nation, these same nation actors are engaging in misinformation. Do not uh, spread uh, these social media posts. Do not address these social media posts. As a matter of fact, quite frankly, what you should do is block anyone when you get these social media posts uh, indicating that A, B, or C is happening when government officials are telling you it is not happening. Mayor, I've been at your direction. Uh, I've been weekly, daily, uh, for the last few weeks. We've been talking almost daily with the Department of Homeland Security. Today I was on a conference call uh, with the Secretary of Homeland Security. There are no current plans to do any of the things. And again, a lot of this is not just people in our community that are being driven by fear. A lot of this, if not most of it, is being driven by hostile governments that are intentionally trying to spread pandemonium and fear. Please listen to the mayor, the governor, the, 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 the judge. Get your information from the people that you pay, that you hire, and that you trust to lead us through these times. Otherwise, we're going to be here probably every day trying to uh, you know, talk about vents at the police department. No Vince at the police department did not put out the, this message. Vince may be, uh, a, 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 again, a, hostile, a member of a hostile government that is sending this stuff out, uh, and that is really happening, and I guarantee you that's really happening. So we need to, again, listen to the public officials. Thank you, Mayor, for having me. Thank you, Chief. So again, there's no lockdown starting tonight at midnight or Saturday night or Sunday night or Monday night. None. There's been no conversation about doing anything like that. Uh, there's no shutdown, but where are we in the city right now? Uh, all sporting events have been canceled. Quite frankly, almost all cultural events have been canceled. With respect to restaurants, bars, and clubs, their activity has been suspended, with the exception of being able to go to a restaurant or take out, take out or pick up or deliver, delivery orders. That's what you have. Um, museums, all been clo are closed. Uh, major events, reschedule or cancel. So all of those things have already taken place. We've been very measured and very deliberate and methodical in our approach. And one of the reasons being is because we have to manage our own expectations and our concerns and anxieties because this is not a one and done. And so misinformation, intentionally putting out misinformation uh, I believe it's a crime, and in talking to the Harris County District Attorney's Office, she also agrees that it's a crime. What she's asked us to do is to investigate it and then forward the information to her, and she will take it, take it from there. So we are taking this, these uh, things very, very seriously, and I'm asking the general public to take it seriously as well. But get your information from credible sources, get it from the television, get it from the newspapers, get it from elected officials, but please, do not just get it from somebody posting something on social media and then you start reposting it and reposting it and then all of a sudden we have massive hysteria within our city. That is not the way to get through this particular crisis. Now pause and if you have any questions, we'll take them. Just to be clear, do you know who either of these people are that are making these videos? I have no idea. We, we, uh, we've, launched the, we've launched an investigation uh, and uh, it just launched within the last couple of hours. But I remember when, when the mayor put out a statement, I retweeted the mayor, and somebody said, what is the First Amendment right? And my response to that individual was, you del and who's going, to hold, who's going to say it's a crime? The same courts, the same juries that will hold you accountable for yelling fire at a theater. There are limits to the First Amendment. And I can tell you, when we're dealing with the issues we're dealing with, we're going to find this person, we're going to identify them. Uh, there's a chance it could be an individual that actually is American, and it could be, uh, there's a chance it could end up being, again, a foreign actor, which is a high probability as well. Do you have any indication or evidence that that is the case, or is that kind of just a... No, I can tell... Well, look, I could, uh, you're talking about the, uh, the uh, social media misinformation campaign. That's been, uh, the nation states have been, uh, imp have been attacking us on social media for quite a few years. It's gotten worse in the last few years. Uh, and I can give you many examples, in, uh, in, including when we were going to have the, uh, the uh, uh, Jade Helm, Operation Jade Helm in Bastrop back in the day where uh, there were accusations that the federal government or the Obama administration was going to take our guns. 
That turned out to be uh, Russian operatives. Uh, we had a, an operation here where there was all over social media that they were coming, that Antifa was coming to take down the Sam Houston statue. You might remember that about two summers ago. That turned out to be uh, nation actor, uh, foreign nation, hostile nation actors. So again, there's, it, it's going on, it's increasing, we know that, and it's important for the American people to not be played not be played by people who would like to see us tear ourselves apart. And that will, will not happen if we listen to our elected officials and, and go only on legitimate news sites, legitimate government sites, and legitimate releases by the people that we elect or that, or that we are appointed to uh, keep our community safe. And let me just say, and people are asking for social security numbers. People are saying, if you want to get your stimulus check, okay, provide this information to us. Number one, Congress is still working on that stimulus package. It hasn't even been approved by Congress and signed by the President. So if anybody is asking you for information, and, and Chief you can please come and join us. If anybody is asking for information in order for you to get you a stimulus check, please bear in mind the bill has not yet been uh, um, voted upon and passed by Congress and signed by the president. So that's not true. So you have the robocalls, you have the things on social media, all of this, these items, it's just misinformation and people trying to take advantage of where people are right now in this particular crisis. Door-to-door sales, Mayor. Door-to-door -door sales. The COVID uh, testing. Right. So there are a lot of things that are taking place. We just felt it was imperative enough as we get ready to go in the weekend to try to stop this misinformation as much, as much as possible. Because it's already difficult to manage this situation. And you have people that are intentionally giving out misinformation makes it even worse. So again, I'm going to implore you, get your news from the television, or get your news from the, the paper, okay? But social media, people who are um, government officials, but the, the last place, the last place to get your information as it relates to this crisis is from social media, okay? Unless it's from someone that you know, and anytime, for example, I put out any sort of tweet, I will put my initial uh, ST behind it, okay? And by all means, don't be so easy to give information to people who are calling you or emailing you and saying, we need this information in order for, for us to provide you with some sort of assistance. You, you mentioned the fear a little bit, and I know that California went into a shutdown yesterday as well as New York, and maybe that's increasing the anxiety levels here. Can you maybe touch on what's, what's different about the situations? Well, I think one, one thing, it certainly would be helpful to have a singular message. Um, and I think it's, it is important to the president to put forth um, uh, general guidelines or tell people what they can expect or what the country is, can expect over the next, for, let's say, several days. So it is important to have a singular message. That's, that's number one. In the absence of that, you have uh, states and cities all doing their very best to protect the health and, and safety and well-being of people in their respective jurisdictions. Uh, California has decided to go with a stay-at-home sort of deal. Um, Illinois, I think, has done something similar, but they have their own modifications to their plan. Uh, but even with regards, for, so for example, now to all of the cities uh, in, the, in the state of Texas, all social events have been canceled, sports events canceled. Um, you cannot go to restaurants, bars, or nightclubs, you know, you can, other than takeout. Um, you have gyms that are closed. So functionally speaking, the only thing that's really left in the city of Houston, for example, people going to work, and many of those individuals are working from home, okay? People are doing teleconferences, they're setting up certain appointments, they're doing things by phone. Um, and so quite frankly, the only thing remaining is going to your place of employment or working from at home, okay? So we all have taken significant steps to give a meaning to social distancing. You can call it by whatever you want to call it. But the reality is um, we have taken significant steps to achieve it. From my vantage point, we do have to be very measured uh, because you have to manage people, not only their physical being, but you also have to manage people's thinking and their emotions, okay? And if you tell someone that you're going to um, shelter in place, whatever, then how long? 
and take it for someone where, that we have gone through Hurricane Harvey. It is easy for me, I won't say easy, it is one thing to say shelter at home uh, while the storm is approaching, while the storm is hitting, and immediately after it leaves. And you can pretty much give a finite time period as to when that will occur. It is much more different to tell people to go and stay home when you don't know whether or not that, that sort of order will be in place for two weeks or two months or longer. So you have to be very measured and very methodical and you have to manage that. The goal is, can you achieve the same objectives, but do it in a, in a very strategic manner? And that's what we are seeking to do uh, in the city of Houston. The governor mentioned that he wants Texans to act responsibly this sure. weekend. I'm sure that means social distancing. I agree. Um, is there anything that needs to, that would have to happen in order for a stay at home to be issued or a shutdown to be issued? Well, from all indications, I mean, people, people are uh, abiding by the orders that we've put in place. And that's, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. People are complying. And people are engaged in social distancing. Even in this city, for example, there are funerals that were scheduled, for example, for this weekend. And they have either changed it just for the family members. They've done things. Churches, for example, faith-based institutions. Many of them are going online and streaming. So they're they are doing that. Um, I mean, people are complying, and, but we just have to continue to be responsible, continue to engage in social distancing, but it's not a one week and done, and that's what we're trying to get people to understand. It's not a one week and done, and done, and you have to do it in such a way that you're not creating a very uh, negative environment. You know, people, you know, uh, if they're at their home, they still have to need to get outside and get some fresh air, okay? You can create a very bad situation if you re, uh, reduce people just to their home and, 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 they don't, and they are not able to get out and walk around or jog or and, uh, go to the park, for example. You don't want to do that because in order, to, in order to overcome this particular virus, it is important that one of the key elements is to have a healthy, a healthy attitude. The issue itself is, is kind of still very two-sided out of the public. You know, there's one side that is very scared, and then there's the other side that is still acting like normal, and they think this is fake. They're blaming the media. What do you want to tell them? Well, no, this is, this is the real deal. You know, people have lost their lives. If, you don't, if we don't respond appropriately, even more people will lose their lives. Uh, it is such that if we don't reduce uh, the progression of this virus, we will overcome our health care system. And it won't just be people who are suffering with this COVID-19, but people who will have other underlying medical conditions that will be impacted. All of us will be impacted if we overwhelm our medical system. So now at the beginning, I think there were people who were saying, no, this is, this is, this is not real and this is not significant. Well, no, it is real, it is significant, and we do need to be definitive and impactful in our actions. And every one of us need to be responsible for what we do. You know, you don't need, you don't need government to tell you to do every, what not to do. You don't need government to do that. But it is important for us to provide information and then people to respond. Now, there are certain things where we've said you cannot do this. But you don't need government to tell you every single minute whether or not you should walk down, uh, go outside and not go outside. You don't need us to do that. But, uh, but that's why information is so important, and we don't want to create an environment where we're creating more fear or more anxiety than what is needed. And Chief, this is for you. If, uh, if people see these posts on social media, what should they do? Uh, well, first of all, let's ignore them. Uh, we, uh, our intelligence center is actually starting to uh, look at social media, trying to find and identify these posts. Uh, and I can tell you it's not just uh, local police, it's state police, it's county police, it's uh, federal agencies, we're going to be actually policing the internet. Uh, but I think something that's really another important, there's a lot of what appears to be news organizations on social media that looks about as legitimate as an article as it is. And if it's not from CNN, Fox, ABC, CBS, and be really careful because a lot of those that people think are real are sent to us and it turns out to be again part of a sustained effort to uh, tear us apart. So we are, we're, going to, we're going to continue to monitor it. We're going to open investigations where it's appropriate. And when we identify people, we're going to go uh, to the DA's office and charge them. 
uh, uh, when appropriate. I know first responders are, are being tested today. I don't know if sure. either of you guys want to touch on that too. Absolutely. So look, first of all, I want to say uh, how extremely proud I am of all first responders. Firefighters, paramedics, uh, police officers, uh, public works, all city employees that are out there, uh, hospital workers, they've been doing an outstanding, <coughs> outstanding job. Um, and look, uh, like the mayor mentioned, this is, a, this is a manageable situation. We have to uh, keep our cool about what we're doing and, and, and uh, get your news from trusted news sources, okay? Uh, the last thing we want uh, to do is be getting our, our news from, from Dr. Twitter or Dr. Facebook um, because you know, there's, you can't verify that information. Anybody in there can post anything and, uh, and really it grows legs and then it, it causes more anxiety and more panic in, in, uh, in people and there is no need for that. Uh, this is a manageable situation. Uh, all the things that we've been doing as a city, as a state, um, uh, is, you know, the, 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 the things are falling in place. The systems are falling in place and we are going to get through this. We're going to get through this as, as a community. We're going to get through this, and uh, we are going to see better days. But in the meantime, we have to do what we need to do to ensure that, that the impact is lessened. And the primary concern is our health care system, right? If it's overwhelmed, then, uh, then the fallout from that is, uh, can, can impact uh, beyond what we can anticipate. So um, again, uh, what, what, what I'd like to recommend here is, is if you're calling 911 in order to protect resources, our first responders, and our healthcare, healthcare workers. Let the call taker know if anybody in the home is, is uh, experiencing flu-like symptoms. That helps us better prepare. Uh, the other thing is use 911 for true emergencies, <clears throat> whether they're healthcare emergencies or security or safety emergencies, okay? Because uh, we can, just like we can overwhelm the healthcare system, we can overwhelm the 911 system as well. And, and uh, you know, it can affect those that are truly at, at need. Hey, can I add one thing sure. there? Because I know that people are really worried about public safety, whether it's fire or police. And let me just be real clear. Uh, both of our agencies are fully staffed, fully operational, with all of our operational capabilities. We're still chasing crooks. <clears throat> we're arresting them. We're taking them to jail. Uh, that's why we're treating this stuff out. So it's really important for the community to know that both of these agencies and all our sister agencies are fully operational, fully equipped to the extent, Mayor, that we haven't even had to extend our shifts to 12 hour shifts. That's how thing, how under control things are in the city of Houston, where we're all, we're, we, we, uh, we have put everybody in uniform, including detectives, just to have a higher visibility, but no one has worked in extended shifts, no one, you know, the people are still having their days off, and that should be reassuring to this community. We have not seen anything from a public safety and security standpoint that has required us. Having said that, we're ready at the direction of the mayor uh, to immediately change our posture if it's necessary. But I think that speaks volumes as to the way that the mayor and, uh, has handled this incident and the way that the community has handled this incident. And I think it should help people rest a lot more comfortable uh, this weekend knowing that that's where we're at as a city. Just in terms of the video itself, I know it's we don't want to put out that misinformation, but have you been in touch with the National Guard or anything that this video is claiming? No. I've had no conversations with the National Guard, none. And let's, and let's have this understanding. If the policy in the city of Houston should change, or should we elect to impose any additional restrictions, you will hear it from me. I do not need some unknown person on social media to tell you about a change in policy. You'll hear it from me, okay? But, you know, we've been telling people you don't have to rush the grocery store. You don't. And I don't want people to feel like they got to get out there. As one person said, Mayor, do we have enough time uh, to get out and do some things before the lockdown at midnight? There's no lockdown. There's no lockdown at midnight. There's no lockdown on Saturday night or Sunday or Monday. No. If there is a change in our position, and if we have to do, impose any additional restrictions, you will hear, get that information from me. Until such time, until such time, just wash your hands, use sanitizer, engage in social distancing, okay? All of those type of things. Order food Friday, get your pizza or something. You know, take it and, and go home. 
you know, do those type of things. But you don't have to feel as though you have to go get two and three baskets and go to the grocery store and fill up with everything. You don't have to do that, okay? And for people who are making these robocalls and on social media and trying to scam people, I have instructed Chief Acevedo and HPD to be very aggressive in their investigation, to utilize all of law, law enforcement because that's a crime to try to create hysteria at this moment of a crisis, that's a crime. And that, in large part, in many cases, can do more harm than the virus itself. And that's why we are taking this very, very seriously. To the general public, to the general public, I know everybody is constantly working with their telephones and looking at social media. But that's not a credible news source. Okay? That's not a credible news source, source. So please, 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 don't look at something and then pass it on to the next person as if that's the gospel. Because in many cases, you're simply working against everyone's Spanish? best interest. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is there any Spanish here, ma'am? Yes, we have two Spanish right here. Okay. You, you, you want to do it on the side, Lump Bar? Or? Are you done, Mayor? I'm done. Okay. We, there was a full situation for five stations right here. Are you done with your questions from the other station? There's other questions unrelated, if you have time for that. Mm -hmm. so let's do the Spanish first, yeah, the so they Spanish, can get the Spanish. Want the Spanish here? Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? For and then you'll, I'll keep to you on the medical. Sorry, we had a, are you pulling for Spanish too, right? Are you pulling for Spanish? Yeah, for Univision and, Univision and. Yeah, they did pick up the teams, because we were watching. Univision and, and uh, okay, yeah. Univision and uh, Telemundo. Yeah. Bueno, aquí estoy eh, con el alcalde. Queremos anunciar que tenemos muchas informaciones en las en la redes sociales que son información que es falsa, información que es fraude y más importante, información que no debemos eh, prestar la atención. El, eh, tenemos información, un, un video que alguien eh, to, está en las uh, redes sociales que, eh, que el alcalde va a ordenar que la ciudad esté cerrada completamente que los, nuestros habitantes no puedan salir de su casa en los, en los próximos dos días, que la Guardia Nacional va a salir. Y queremos decirle primeramente que eso es información falsa. El alcalde es el que va a anunciar si algo va a ser distinto. La comunidad tiene que saber que todo está bajo de bien control, que la policía, el departamento policíaco de Houston, estamos funcionando al 100%, que tenemos todas nuestras llamadas, el combatir el crimen, todo va, eh, sigue. Y el, el jefe de la bomba va a hablar un momentico. La otra cosa que quiero decirle, que es importante, que sepan que en las redes eh, sociales, que tenemos gobiernos que son gobiernos que están contra este país, que est están intencionalmente dando falsa información para crear el temor en nuestra comunidad y el terror. Si la información no es del departamento de la policía, del departamento de los bomberos, del alcalde o de una... Eh, a asociación de eh, prensa que es conocida, no le haga caso. La última cosa que quiero decir del, del Departamento de Policía, tenemos mucho fraude que está ocurriendo. Tenemos personas que están yendo de casa a casa, tratando de vender las, las examinaciones médicas. Eso es todo fraude. Llamando a las casas, pidiendo su número de seguro social, que el alcalde habló de eso hace un minuto. Eh, que, que es el gobierno que necesitamos su número de eh, seguro social para mandarle su dinero del de, Congreso. Todo eso es fraude. Ningún eh, agencia del gobierno está llamando pidiendo esos datos, así que uh, no le hagan caso y más importante, no esté abriendo su puerta a extraños que puede estar en su, eh, yendo a su, a su casa tratando de tocar en la, en la puerta porque son eh, delincuentes que quieren robarle su dinero. ¿Qué? ¿Alguna pregunta en español? Y ahora se lo voy a dar al jefe. Uh, Peña. ¿No hay pregunta para, el, para la policía? ¿Nada? Ok. Sí. Bueno, buenas tardes. Este, mire, primero que nada quiero uh, decir otra vez lo que, lo que acaba de decir el jefe uh, Acevedo eh, y aquí el alcalde Turner. Si hay informaciones en las redes sociales que la ciudad de Houston va a estar cerrada, que la Guardia Nacional este, va a llegar aquí y va a cerrar la, la ciudad, eso es completamente falso, completamente falso. Si esa información uh, llega a, a llegar, la información va a ser dada por el alcalde Turner. 
Si no oyen esta información del alcalde, entonces es puro rumor. ¿okay? Lo que queremos uh, que sepa la comunidad es que el Departamento de Policía, y el Departamento de Bomberos y todas las funciones de la ciudad están operando uh, uh, de, de completo uh, nivel. ¿sí? No, no hay nada que sea cerrado de, uh, cerca de los departamentos de, de, la, de la ciudad. Este, estamos de, en fuerza completa, estamos respondiendo a las llamadas y lo que queremos es que la comunidad agarre su noticia de fuentes de noticias que son creíbles. ¿sí? Que no agarren sus noticias de, de Twitter o de Facebook, porque muchas de esas uh, noticias no son verificadas y causan más pánico y más rumores y eso hace eh, la situación, uh, empeora la situación. Así es que uh, les queremos asegurar aquí del Departamento de Policía, el Departamento de Bomberos de la ciudad de Houston, que la ciudad está operando uh, 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 justamente a este momento. Y no hay planes ahorita de, de hacer ningún cierro total de esta ciudad. ¿sí? Uh, lo que queremos también uh, el, el comunicar a la comunidad es que usen el 911 apropiadamente. ¿sí? Que sean emergencias uh, médicas o emergencias de seguridad en lo que uh, acudan al, al 911 porque no queremos que el sistema eh, uh, haga más llamadas de lo que podemos atender. ¿sí? Hasta este momento estamos en fuerza completa. Podemos responder a las llamadas de policía, llamadas de bomberos y llamadas de servicio de otros departamentos de, de la ciudad. Así es que acudan a fuentes de noticias que son creíbles y si una información adicional acerca de los, del estado de la ciudad, ese va a ser comunicado específicamente por el alcalde Turner. Gracias. Juan. Había dicho este, que si llaman a 911, que la gente a veces si tienen algunos síntomas. Sí, mire, seguro. Estamos ahorita eh, lidiando con el, con el coronavirus. Y nosotros lo que queremos hacer es, es eh, proteger a, a, a nuestros bomberos y al público. ¿sí? Si los bomberos se, expose, se exponen a, a, este, a este virus, entonces hay peligro de que ellos se enfermen y puedan exponer uh, o enfermar a las gentes también que ellos están tratando. Así es que para poder combatir eso, lo que pedimos al público es que si llaman al 911 y si hay personas en sus casas, en sus hogares, que tengan sistemas de, de la gripe, que, que nos avisen para poder prepararnos apropiadamente. El Departamento de Bomberos y el Departamento de Policías tienen el equipo de protección completo. Hasta este momento tenemos bastante equipo para nuestros uh, empleados, para que se protejan apropiadamente, pero necesitamos la ayuda del, del, de la comunidad, ¿sí? que nos avisen y que usen el 911 a, apropiadamente. ¿Qué recomiendan para la comunidad latina? Mira, la comunidad latina lo que queremos decirles es que, uh, uh, eh, que si necesitan ayuda, no le hace el estatus el migratorio. ¿sí? Si necesitan ayuda del 911 en esta crisis ahorita con el coronavirus, que llamen al 911. Para eso estamos. Para eso estamos para ayudarles el departamento de bomberos y el departamento de policías. Es, no tienen que tener temor, no tienen que tener miedo de llamar para asistencia de cualquier uh, departamento de, de la ciudad de Houston. Grocery stores, all that kind of stuff is considered essential. Would that stay open? Well, the grocery stores, uh, we've repeatedly said the grocery stores are, are not shutting down uh, at all. There's no problem with the food supply. We're not anticipating a problem with the food supply. And then we'll just take things as, as they come, you know, um, based upon the facts and what's presented to us. But at this point in time, uh, we are proceeding under the restrictions that we've already, that we've already imposed. I just know that there might be people with family members in, in San Antonio and they want to go see them for a day or something. And they might be concerned that all of a sudden there's going to be a, a lockdown and they're not going to be able to get back or something like that. No, that's, no, no we're not going to, we're, we're not going to be doing that. And, you know, the goal is not to add to people's anxieties, but to lessen people's anxieties. Yeah. So whatever policies that we put in place, we're, we're always going to be very thoughtful and considerate. Uh, look, the, we're trying to contain, not contain, but mitigate and slow down to blunt the progression of this, uh, of this, uh, of this virus. So we want to be very thoughtful people in, the, in our city. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all so very much.